Have that ever happened to you? Have you ever been on a date where the, the girl just left? Never. Because I'm going to be outside hulking your mother. <laughs> 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 Okay, I'm gonna take the Branzino. And he said, yes. I'm gonna take the burger. And the waitress yes. asked him, Okay, how do you like your burger? He said, How he likes his burger. And do you want some cheese on your burger? And he asked, Is this gonna be extra? And she says, Yes, it's $3 extra. And he said, Okay, then never mind. And he's like, Oh my god, you have to pay extra for everything these days. And I'm like, Yeah. New York City. So I got my Bernardino, <laughs> he got his burger, we were eating. And once I was satisfied, I got up and I was like, I'm going to the restroom for a second. And I took my purse and I went to the waitress and I was like, hey, I just want to pay the bill. And I just paid the bill and walked out of the restaurant and I texted him. So I texted him, the check is taken care of, you should have gotten the cheese. And I blocked him. Shout out to TikTok. Hey, Mally Rose Podcast, episode 143. Fellas, that is some bullshit. Just take the L, fellas. Just take the L. I know now, some of y'all are starting y'all week. Let's get right lovers. into it. Yeah. Take your L, burger lovers. Let's take let's get right into it. Let me just start first, Terrell. Go ahead. Just don't say shit. Because you don't get to talk because you're one of the people that Terrence, you don't okay, get well, to, just you know, don't we get to talk. that bullshit that you said. You don't get to you just don't, you don't get to come over here and talk like you was a this isn't your victory speech. I don't have a victory speech to have at all. This is a victory speech for me. 100. Because just last week or a week or a week or two ago, when I said that ordering a burger on the first date was not a smart move, a lot of you burger loving motherfuckers got in my head, got in my face. You were disrespectful, you know? <laughs> but y'all told me that I was tripping for that. And low key, you got smacked with the truth. That's what happened. He felt he feels like he's right, fella. You got smacked with the truth. This man ordered a All right, let's talk about it. Because honestly, I gotta keep it a buck. This shit looking dingy. I still don't anymore. think there's anything, and this is the thing about Terrence. There's nothing wrong with bro ordering the burger. I didn't say it was anything wrong with. Well, yes, it is. Oh, you're right. You're right. There's no, there was there was nothing wrong with him ordering the burger. Okay. The only issue was this nigga just did not get the cheese. I'm I'm stop. I'm about to stop cursing and saying the n word. Uh, starting now. Hold me accountable, y'all. I'm gonna just give a little backstory first before I say the response. If you didn't really catch that, bro went out with a chick. Um, she just like blocked him because he ordered a burger. And then the waitress was like, cheese costs extra. He didn't want the cheese, so she just like left. So he made a remix and said the burger was $21, and I'm already paying $21 for a burger. This is where, to me, I was like, all right, you just take the L for this. And fellas, I already know. Like, she dodged a bullet. She, if she's that worried about the cheese, it just, I mean, I, is it extra that she left? Yeah. Number one, it was nothing wrong with bro ordering the burger. She was fine with that. This motherfucker, this is what people don't get. You go out with a chick. You order a burger. The waitress says cheese is extra. You say, damn, don't give me the cheese. Just give me the hamburger. You let know me, what I'm going to say, Terrell. Let me just say this. I went to Five Guys the other day. Got me and Terrence a burger. This was actually last week, a couple weeks ago pod, mm -hmm. actually. Um... Got both of us a burger, and I accidentally got a bacon burger. <laughs> I didn't get ordered a bacon cheeseburger. So <laughs> my burger had, <laughs> why are you laughing? My burger had a bun, burger, burger. <laughs> I'm laughing at burger. <laughs> That's just like a crazy. <laughs> my burger had burger, burger, 
tomato, uh, lettuce, bun. And I had ketchup on that joint. It was the driest burger that I ever had. And so you go out on a date with a cheese. I don't give a fuck if the cheese was $10 extra. If you get in that, you have to get the cheese. I agree. I think he learns a valuable lesson. Mm -hmm. Same. I still think Shorty's whack for that. But I think, it's, not that, it's never that serious. All right, Terrell. Whatever, nigga. I think fuck this nigga. he definitely learned a very valuable lesson. I'm glad you said that. Hold on, wait, Terrell. It, this right here, is that in it? Is that in? But I don't think so. I'll go look. You start talking. He definitely learned a very valuable lesson by ordering that burger. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and the writers on the wall, everybody's trying to make it seem like it's everything else but the burger. The, the biggest L is the burger. Terrence, Everybody, no, it's not. The biggest L is the burger. She said you should have got the cheese blocked. What was she talking about? Cheese on the what? On the burger. Right. Because this motherfucker got a dry ass double patty burger at the would restaurant. Would she have hit you and said you should have got the cheese if you would have got like a pasta? Or look, some people were like, oh, well, should he have ordered chicken fingers? He'd still have a shot if he did. Because it ain't nothing extra that I got to pay for that. Unless they said the barbecue sauce was $3 extra or some shit. Hey, look, this one I'm going to give it. I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. This motherfucker going to die on this hill, as y'all can see. There's, no, die up here. there's nothing wrong with ordering a burger if you're at a restaurant. Don't get it confused. There's nothing wrong. If you go on a first date with a girl and you bur and you order a restaurant, uh, let me just start over. <laughs> you want a first date with a girl and you order a burger in a restaurant? Come on, bro. I don't even have to tell you that he should have paid for the cheese and he should have. Bro, you shouldn't be getting a fucking burger. You niggas are lame as shit. I'm, I'm going I'm to just run you're lame. with that. Fuck you. You're lame. Y'all are lame as shit. You're doing this on your first date. You're biting into a so bun. Okay, but bet. But if he got a crab cake sandwich, then what? We've had this you conversation last week, two weeks ago. He got a crab weeks weeks cake sandwich, Terrell. Because if, if he you did, get, if you get a cra if you get any type of this, is what I'm just giving to y'all. Just, just some some shit I give y'all. You a if you get a sandwich or wings on a first date, you run a risk because you about to eat like a fucking savage. I went to, you know what's crazy? I went to a European, not European, an Ethiopian restaurant on a first date before. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to eat with your hands. Uh-huh. And that was kind of, you know. Shout out to y'all. Yeah. 100%. That was definitely dope. But it was more of like experience. Like the eating with your hands is the experience. That's the only time that I think that that's acceptable. We both got to eat with our hands or something where we both got to, you know. But come on, y'all. Ordering the burger, you take a fucking L. That's what the fuck you get. You pay $21 for a burger. You ended up not wanting to get the cheese because you said the cheese wasn't worth it. But $21 for a burger was worth it when I can go up the street to the McDonald's and get a burger for $3? Let me just say Oh, this. let me guess. The beef was sirloin. It was smokehouse. Jam let me tell y'all this. Poached. First of all, I don't give a damn about none of that shit. Don't listen to, don't listen to Terrence. He's going to die on this. He's running up that... He's running up that hill. What's that, what's that song from Stranger Things? The girl told you that it was the cheese, not me. Te okay, she's whack. Number one. Oh, she's whack. Number one, because really? Nah, fuck that, Terrell. Now, it was Bro was fucking with an eagle, and he was a pigeon. Oh, weak God. Ass, weak ass, you walking around talking about all oh, damn here. Yeah, you know, I still got the burger. I'm good. I didn't want to pay for the cheese, but you walking around looking stupid as shit. Because let, me tell you, let me tell you this. You definitely did one, shorty. Let me tell you, you this. You did. Don't even act like you didn't fuck with her because you was on a date with her. Bro, this is the only advice that I will give you that I think is constructive. Let me make sure my drink is on silent. The only advice I will say, if a bro ever sees this, there was nothing wrong with you ordering a burger. You took the L where you was too cheap to get a, a $3 piece of cheese. This is my thing. If you're already ordering a $21 burger, just go ahead and get the extra the cheese. What's that three dollars difference? You lost your whole it crush just, for a hamburger. It just make you look weak. It just make it's just not a it just it's not a good move. It's almost like if you go to you just ate a piece of beef between two pieces of bread, like there's nothing in between. You had to sit there and eat a hamburger. That wasn't a good look, bro. I'll be honest. That's not and a good look. And she was player. Like, Nothing that's wrong. That's why I said you was fucking with an eagle. She was player. She paid for your shit. She texted you, told you what you should have did. She could have just stepped off on your ass when you ordered. And then you just be sitting there dumb as fuck thinking that it was just and my... And then got the bill. It was my shirt. It was... Nah. You're she sitting did. there looking stupid as fuck like this when she don't come back to the table. You sitting there like this. Dumbass. Because you ordered a burger. I will say... I don't think there's any wrong, anything wrong with ordering a burger, but get the fuck out of here. 
I'm sick ordering of all a, of you niggas. Ordering a hamburger is nasty work. I've had so many people hit me and say, hey, look, bro, it's nothing wrong with ordering a burger, bro. I mean, I would never order a burger, but it's nothing wrong. <laughs> Stop it. Stop telling me it's something wrong with what you would never do. You can't tell me you would never do it, but it's never wrong with it. Come on. I don't think there's anything wrong with ordering a burger. Now, would I get a burger? No. But I might. I don't got to tell y'all nothing. Go ahead and ask Shorty what she just said. I mean, you're hearing it from the horse's mouth right here. This, not a, this, not a, this isn't a brother that's talking. This isn't a, a, a man. That's this not even is a just, horse. It's a woman. Fellas, don't fall for it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to it. believe me if you don't want get to. Get a burger. And then look, that just goes to show that she y'all like shallow anyway. Because why is that like a deal? Why you get up and leaving from that? You could at least finish the date. You know what's you crazy? Got, you left my man in a restaurant. Sitting there, you left my man in the restaurant. You paid for the bills. So that's pee. Whatever. You didn't have to do that. But you could have at least told, bro, like, so why you don't want to get the cheese? Ask. You don't know what this motherfucker could be could say. What if he said, you know what? I'm actually sometimes cheese mess with my stomach, but if it's extra, then I'm just not gonna get it. I normally don't get it anyway. I was just thinking about maybe getting it that she time. Knew, she knew. Y'all don't know what bro was getting ready she to say. She saw you shaking like a stripper when he said when she said the cheese was three dollars. Oh, it was three dollars. Oh, never, no, never, never mind, never mind. Damn, this motherfucker bailed out on the cheese already. I'm going to the bathroom real quick. Purse, let's go. <laughs> I'm taking my purse, my phone keys. Have that ever happened to you? Have you ever been on a date where the, the girl just left? Never. Because I'm gonna be outside hulking your motherfucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm outside hawking the rest of I'm not the only one paying this bill. You got this drink too. <laughs> hey, that's it's like, nah, but not. Have you? Have you? I'm trying to think if I ever had that happen to me. I've been stood up before. <laughs> We've been stood up before. I've been stood up before. You've yeah. been stood up before. I've been I've been stood up before. Yeah, I was with my boy Don. Shout out my boy Don. We was uh we were supposed to have a date at the mall and I got stood up. Uh no, but look, let me say this first. About what you're saying with the cheese. Because that brings up a good point. She is saying, and this is a woman, she telling y'all that she doesn't like the fact that he ordered a burger, didn't get the cheese, but low-key, it's the burger. It's not it the, the fucking the burger, the burger. If this so, man got a crab cake sandwich and asked if the tomato was extra. All I asked was for some time to speak. Go ahead. <laughs> now, what happens if I choose to get violent? <laughs> <laughs> what then? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, all I'm going to say is she telling y'all what she don't like, and y'all are trying to ignore it and just act like she's shallow, she's extra. She is. Okay, bet. But at what point do we take constructive criticism? I'm going to bring up another point. And we're not talking about this, but this brings up a, a de decent point. At the Vanity Fair event, Sierra wore that dress with the fishnet, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody had something to say about it. Right? All the fellas came out and said, you know what? I went with my girl wearing that. Yo, I mean, I don't know. Not me. And all the women are talking about how, well, Russell Wilson, her $270 million husband, attended the game with her and doesn't care. And she can do whatever she wants. That is totally true. But I, I feel like even with that situation, there's some calls for some constructive criticism from the opposite side of shit. The same way that this girl is telling us, you know what, bro ordered a burger, shit threw me off, didn't want the cheese, I blocked him. You know what we saying? Instead of us saying, hmm, you know what, I'm not going to order a burger because I don't want that shit to happen to me. You know what, you, I don't even want to face that situation. You know what, I'm going to just get a pasta. You know what we say? What the fuck is wrong with her? She's shallow as shit. Really for a piece of fucking cheese? It becomes Obviously, it's not only about the cheese. Don't let me get it all. Opposite side with the Sierra <laughs> thing. It's like you got men talking about how they feel like it might be too revealing. It might be too much for a red carpet. I don't like the fact that so-and-so looking at it. And then instead of the lady saying, you know what? They are telling us how they view it. It's everybody who has a problem with it, shallow as fuck. Doing too much, worried about somebody else. It's like, at what point is it just... They, I mean, at what point are we just ignoring what we're hearing from the horse? You know how they say it's from the horse's mouth? At what point are we just ignoring that and just thinking, yeah, Terrence, but you have issues. You, you have to admit that now you, okay, so you're right. I didn't have an issue with the Sierra dress. I just thought she looked smooth out of the lagoon. I didn't really have an issue with it. I just joint, get, you know. 
I see. I see the perspectives. The dress looked like when Nemo. Remember Nemo and that, remember Nemo and Do, remember when Dory found Nemo and they got stuck in that net and they had to they keep, had to keep swimming, swimming down. That's yeah. what this looked like. I didn't really necessarily have an issue with everything being out, but then again, I understood the men that do, and that's the thing I was telling my girl. That's because what I'm of course your girl gonna have the the lady side of it. All I said was, if Russ cool with it, you right. That's his woman. That's all he got to deal with. Yeah. Men are just saying, yo. I wouldn't let my do that. And women are saying, why are you? You're not dating Sierra, number one. Mm. And also, so it's just a never, it's a never ending thing. Now, let me ask you this, since we here. Usher, saying to the chick, okay, you at the concert with Usher. This ain't really course of action. This man sitting in a nice ad, they had a nice ass seat. You been at a concert, you know, you just get a seat and normally it's a row. It's like going to a football game. Yeah. Or basketball game. These motherfuckers had tables next to them and shit. And this motherfucker they, they had their legs to table. out. Yeah. Usher is walking in front of you. That's an expensive ticket. I'm already kind of nervous with this motherfucker walking around. I'm looking like the. Oh damn! What was he singing? Come to everybody's table. What's he singing? There goes my baby. Yeah. He was singing. There goes my baby. Wouldn't and this nigga's hovering. He stands up on the small table, y'all. Like uh, like um, Scarlett takes a tumble. And he's singing to your girl. Yeah. In her face. He get down, stands up and says, my bad, dog. Nah, no way. I ain't mean to, to sing to your girl like that. No way. Yeah. That's the situation with fellas. I know I'm always saying, like, you know, I'm always playing the non-insecure role. But that's a nigga trying to sing you. It's one thing to sing in my girl's face. It's one thing for you to sing in, in my girl's face. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, you know what, he's performing. He's not being disrespectful, he's performing. He's just singing in her face low-key, so it's low-key disrespectful, but he can kind of get around that because he's doing his shit. He's singing, yeah, it's right. whatever. But when you stand up and now you're putting the spotlight on me, now I'm about to take both your ankles. You just stop the show. Pull you from the thing, crack your fucking spine on this back pole. Usher. And then you're really going to be on TMZ because me. Nah, see, because I'm not going to get violent because that's just going to make me look dangerous. You just got to look like you about to get violent. You just can't go out that way. You know they say? I ain't go, I can't go outside. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Especially about that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I can't go outside. So, low-key, I'm not about to get myself in. I'm not going to put myself in jail, break this nigga's back. You know, he got a million-dollar franchise yeah, walking no around, bull- ability, whatever. No, you boy, she going to sue the hell out of you if you, if you hurt Yeah. Him. You just supposed to... First I'm throwing off, my drink at the nigga. The fact that this nigga's walking around singing is already like, oh, shit. You know how it's like when a comedian starts telling jokes and they're like, look at this motherfucker with the brown. Why the fuck are you with that brown? Why the motherfucker with a green? You sitting there with your orange like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you thinking of all the shit he can say about you? I'm going to say I look like I uh, know, right? You know, you are hoping this motherfucker <laughs> don't look good. And you know you looking bright. The same way, that same fear... I'd be scared. He walking around. There goes my baby. Uh, look, ooh, look at your girl. girl. Yeah. Look at you. And you trying to be cool, so you were like, they go, oh, shit. But you like, oh, shit. <laughs> nigga about to come over. This nigga coming over to you, girl. He didn't do it right, because guess what? Stood up on the table, and he's hitting the, checking your ass. Hitting the heels, oh, oh, he shit. did. He did. You still know the words, so you mad, but you still singing. Yeah. <laughs> you try to be a good boy. But Let me tell you what I look. You looking at him? What's going on? What's going on up there? Then look, he looking at your girl. What, what, you know the climax of the song. Which part? Oh, what it? But as soon as, but as soon as you come walk, <laughs> we making up our own story at this point. No, nah, this nigga went too far. You know what I would do, though, Terrence? I would we have... already heard what you would do. No, you would break I... his back on the table. It was my turn to explain what I would do. All right, go ahead. What'd you do? You're supposed to just, when that happens, you just got to act like you're going to do some shit that you're not going to do. Which is what? Which is you just got to act like you have a problem with it. And when people say, well, how do you do that? This is the thing. This the thing is, you really do not know. <laughs> you don't know why this is disrespectful. You just know he just talked to your girl and then to you. That's all you need to know. Isn't it? You're just putting that together. Look, people are like, you insecure. I'm playing. But you have to save face. 
You can't do tans. You can't. You have to either go all the way or you can't. Because what did the dude would have said? Fuck you, nigga. Nah, they would clown that's this nigga on the internet. You can't do that. This is what you gotta do. You have to just act like you don't know what's going on. You confused, but he but he dissed you, but you don't know what happened, and neither does he. You know how you do that? When he said, "Oh my bad, dog. I didn't mean to talk to your girl." You say, "Hold on, wait. What happened?" <laughs> oh no, wait. What was that? Wait, what he say? Look. And you get. <laughs> what was that? No, but what we talking about? Look, what we talking about? He doesn't know what the fuck is happening. I should go be sitting there like, hold on, my bad, no, no, my bad, no, he's cool. To, here come the security. As soon as security get on me, I'm like, nah, let me at him. <laughs> you are the nigga. I should was talking to his girl. He didn't fuck with that. That's how you supposed to go out, man. You need supposed to go man out. Man, like taking out because I should didn't fuck with his girl. They got you. they taking you out. What's bruh from the Pistons that was breaking through the security trying to get the brown? Yeah, him. How <laughs> you need to do? You need to be busting through the the security. I right, bet. Nah, but what you really do in that situation is you pull your girl closer to you, and now you sing. Because you're going to sing to her, you're singing to me. I'll sing along with her. I know the words, nigga. Now we both singing to you. you Keep gonna that look shit like a moving. Fool when you grab your girl because his girl was like this. Damn, and you know what? She put bro in a bad situation. I was saying this, dog, and I and I got I got I don't feel like it was, I don't feel like it hit. We had an Ice Spice concert, you know what I'm saying? Ice Spice rapping and doing her thing. She come up to me, say some lyrics, and you know you vibing, so you like, yeah. <laughs> you say your shit. She turn over. Oh, not turn over, but turn around, do her shit. She's Ice Spice. She hey, doing her thing. That's sexual though. Asha's was a little bit more All innocent right, than Let's, that. Okay, bet. Let's say it's not even that. She just say some lyrics or whatever. Or any artist. Like, you you at any situation. I feel like any situation where a the artist table is, is flipped, you. I feel like we would look at it different. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like, damn, all right. He can't control himself. Damn, he got his girl right there. And you know what happened? The man would be wrong again. Yeah, you were supposed to close your eyes and turn around. Wow, really disrespecting his woman? Looking at her. Jeez. Jesus Christ. Did you see the, the girl with Idris Elba? Made her husband wait outside that at was like 6 a.m. That, was that wasn't bad. What? Bad. Oh, that wasn't bad. Backstory. I don't even know why we're talking about this bullshit. The docket isn't really that crazy. Not a lot happened anyway. But I have the link if you want to hear what this motherfucker said. I don't said. need to hear it. This is what happened. A dude and his girl. His girl... His wife, let's get it correct. Which his that makes it even worse. His key. wife is a fan of Idris Elba. So Idris Elba was going to be on whoever, seven, six, eight, eight, nine, somebody news. So they went up there jump 4 a.m. To, to basically wait outside the joint because his wife is such a big fan and she got to meet Idris Elba. So they went in the studio and they were like, we've got a fan that's waited outside for you here. And they're right over here. Do you want to say something to her? She didn't even expect to talk to the nigga. So Idris goes over there and says, yo, I appreciate you. You waited all that time for me, whatever. Like the nigga should. Her husband shakes Idris Elba's hand, you know, and lets her wa his wife have that moment. What the fuck is the big deal? You niggas. I'm sorry. Y'all fellas. Something is wrong with y'all. People saying... He let his girl do that shit. I'm gonna let you get your shit off. He let his girl, yeah, he couldn't. You, your wife woke up for another man, please. Okay, my mom loves Barack Obama. If Barack was gonna be in town, my dad would take her to see Barack. Don't, don't matter what. Does my dad think that my mom about to leave him for Barack? No, because he's not insecure like that. That is your own insecurity, fellas. If you have an issue, if you're scared, that's your own insecurity, and that's why I'm going to leave it right there. I'm thinking about all of this shit that would, yeah. You want to say it's your insecurities? All right, bet. Yeah, all right, bet. We'll own that. Fellas. Okay, yeah, as long as y'all know. They want to say that we're insecure? Fuck it. Let's just own it. However, I'll put things into a perspective. Like, I can't do the lead up part. Y'all making it sound very simple, but to me it ain't. We're not even from here. Did you forget that part? We're not even from here. We done drove down here because we miraculously know when you are getting ready to be on this because your wife is a big fan TV show. Your wife is so much of a big of a fan of some nigga that she know when he doing an interview and so much of a fan that I got to drive her because, you know, 
we're married, so she ain't driving. She ain't driving. <laughs> she probably ain't even paying. I'm funding this entire, not even funding, because you, I get it, marriage, whatever. I'm just saying, you know, you're putting all of your shit, your sweat equity, your money. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. putting all of this towards a trip to wherever this dude is so that look, we get a hotel room. We wake up in the morning. Can you imagine your girl is in this situation with like a single? It don't even matter who it is, but like, can you imagine your girl waking you up? It's time to get up. It's time to get up. <laughs> right. And you got to get up and you realize what you're getting up for. We're going to see if we can see bruh at his interview. Look, you get dressed. You look in the mirror. You see her putting her lotion on her makeup or her she put her smell good on and you just like <laughs> Terrence, they was on the way they was not in it all right we on the way to the joint and she like come on we about to be late come on we about to be late look i can't do this <laughs> i can't do it i'm sorry first off <laughs> calm down because like you'll get there we gonna make it you, you get, get all there. hypotheticals go ahead we get there and they interviewing her because she actually fucked around and got lucky enough to see this motherfucker. Look, that's the bad part. Oh, we can see him? Hey, they say we can see him. Damn. Look, I'm not happy about this shit at all. I was hoping that they said y'all was too late. I'm stalling all morning. Look, we get there. And then they give her the microphone. She starts shaking, shivering and crying and shit. She's a fan. Oh, hell no. Nah. I'm a fan of a lot of things. I ain't crying and shivering. Now, like I said, we've been talking about this for a minute. Let's go ahead and split the script. Let's say I was a big fan of LMA. Right? Terrence, hold on, wait, no. No, I'm going to say this too because I got to... Uh, I want to respond to what you just said. I got a, uh, a new celebrity crush. I got a slight celebrity crush on uh, Tim's. Really? 100, 100, 100. I don't okay. know. I, but imagine I go see... Tim's right and I'm like geeked up and I'm like yeah, I'm just such a big fan I'm with my girl and when I see her I'm shaking crying shaking crying Terrell I know that I'm not tripping that looks like yo like honestly this is my thing y'all I'm gonna just leave it at this if you with your wife I don't want to be with somebody that's that geeked up off of a celebrity I don't give a fuck what they do am I tripping if you with your wife so this somebody you swore vows for God you stood before the Lord and spoke Vows. This is somebody who I've given my life to. This celebrity crush means nothing. They have kids. You saying y'all took a vow before God. Y'all did. Okay, and now your wife is shaking like she's about to meet God standing in front of some other man. She's a fan. And honestly, bruh provided his girl with the craziest moment to meet her celebrity I don't know if I don't even want to say celebrity crush. Maybe she just liked the niggas movies. I don't know. I don't. It, I didn't. She didn't give me vibes like she just wanted to like be with bruh. I get the celebrity crush thing. Do your thing. We all got celebrity crushes. You know what I'm saying? I'm not upset at it, but like, all right, when we taking it to that level, then it's like, all right, bet. I'm not waking up at 4 a.m. I'm not getting a hotel room. We're not waiting outside of ABC Fox Studios so that you can go up here and be crying when you get the microphone. Man, I mean, this seems like some weird shit. I'm not really vibing with that. That shit is type whack to me. Next. Y'all let me know what y'all think. We're going to get killed for the beginning of this podcast. I'm on to the next one on show. Terrence has serious issues that need to be ironed out. Shout out to everybody that watched the Oscars. I live tweet mm -hmm. the Oscars every year. I watch every year. I think some of y'all that follow me that know we talk about music forget that I went to school for film. 100%. So I actually give a fuck about this shit. Me. I don't give a fuck about y'all arguments over who, which one of these albums will go, which one of these albums will stay. Mitch me all Terrell, what do you think about this? It's crazy. Good Kid, Mad City, right? I don't give a fuck about that. When it comes to the Oscars, the biggest film night of the year, I went to school for this. Yeah. 100%. So all y'all that was tweeting me saying, Jesus Christ, all right, we're done with this. This is crazy. Sorry, but not sorry. Anyway, let me say this real quick about what you just said. All right, because I wanted to say this. We watch the Oscars, uh, at least me. I watch the Oscars every year, even if I haven't seen any of the movies, mm -hmm. because I know that these are people who are getting ready to win awards for work that they could have done over years. It like most of the work that gets done in films that you see at the Oscars sometimes takes at least three years. Like you're watching movies that have been worked on for three years finally get their day on that stage. Yes. That's why I can always watch, even if I haven't seen it, like, 
because we did go to film school, we know what goes into not only making the movies, but like how long it takes. Seeing somebody win an award for like a season of playing yep. a sport or something like that is a little bit different. Even a, putting out a song is different on the, mu- on the movie side, even TV, because like, we know how much goes into right and how much time it takes. Mm-hmm. Like Everything Everywhere All at Once, which we'll talk about, they started working on that in 2010. Wow, yeah. And so can you imagine? Yeah. Like you work on some shit for 10 years. And doing little projects in between, yeah, whatever. But then, 13 years later, now you want to Oscar stage. Well, honey. And you got to treat the Oscars like a film festival, y'all. Like, yo, you're seeing movies that you need to go... This is some of the most highly regarded movies. You need to go see what those movies are about. You, I, I watch the Oscars every year, and I'm like, yo, I'm going to go watch that. I ain't see that. I'm going to go watch that. People who didn't watch All Quiet on the Western Front? Come on. Beating myself up about that. I put y'all on early. You did, you did. It was your movie suggestion. It was your uh, movie suggestion. Many y'all's in the field. I'm like, girly. Niggas your girl, Big Shirley. My girl. I hate this nigga. All right, y'all, look. You're no fun. The best picture went to everything, everywhere, all at once. Not going to be too long-winded on it. Smoke There's some of the notable things that happened. Everything, everywhere, all at once won seven Grammys. Hundo. Wow, shit. Oscars, forgive me. Um, they won the Oscar for best actor, best supporting actor. Um, Best Supporting Actress. Motherfucking, uh, fucking, what else did they win? Supporting Actress. That's what I said. You said Best Actor. I meant to say Best Actress, forgive me. Best Actress for Michelle Yeoh. Best Supporting Actress for Ki Hui Kwan. And uh, Best Supporting Actress for Jamie Lee Curtis. Best Supporting yeah, Actor best. for He Like oh, Kwan. damn, yeah, 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 for sure. I'm fucking it up. And they won Best Director and Best Film. I'm going to just tell y'all, like, that's going to be my movie suggestion of the week, again, because you need to see it. But, um... You really got to applaud the effort of that film. And I'm honestly proud of myself and us. Because if you tried to go see everything, everywhere, all at once in theaters, it was shown on small screens. I don't know if y'all know. But when that joint came out, Sonic came out. And that motherfucker was on 20 screens in the theater. Sonic. Yeah. When we went to go see everything, everywhere, it was like 12 o'clock show, 4 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And we like, damn, damn, they only got three shows in one theater. And the theater was small as fuck. And it came back out. So we just like really hustled or like made it happen to see that film. And I'm glad I saw it in the theater. I knew walking out of the theater that they would win the Oscar for Best Picture. I knew it. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker, if he would stop fiddling with his phone. You ever take a screenshot of somebody for what's in the picture? Like, I got a screenshot of this girl in my phone, but it's because of her hand tattoo. Uh-huh. But it looks like a picture of a girl in my phone. You'll never be able to get that off. I just told yeah, you. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let me get the number one. <laughs> Look, you said you was going to get the milkshake. She doesn't want the milkshake. Now you're trying to include him. You, you can see take how they it do off. Us. You can take it off. <laughs> I know she's looking at she the bro with the shaky hand because he's nervous now. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> and don't let her be what's supposed to pay. Your card. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck if she mad. <laughs> Your card. <laughs> That's actually a good movie suggestion of the week. Everything, everywhere, all in one. Shout out to 824. They smoked it. Smoked they it. definitely ran the Oscars. Mm-hmm. But, uh,. Other than that, did you want to get off on some other shit on the Oscars? I mean, we could talk about one Nah, for sure, day, yeah. But. I mean, Brendan Fraser won for The Whale. I've yeah. told y'all to go see it. He was supposed to win. Austin Butler, I thought he was going to win for the Elvis joint. I'm glad they gave it to the actual best performance. Um, but the biggest, you know, some of the biggest things to come out of the night was the fact that Angela Bassett did not win for um, Wakanda Forever, even though she won the Golden Globe. We thought for sure she would win. Now, Jamie Lee Curtis won the Oscar, but Jamie Lee Curtis won the SAG Award, and Stephanie Sue won the the uh, the BAFTA. Mm-hmm. So it was kind of a toss-up, but normally the person that takes home the Golden Globe, normally, but there's many times where it doesn't happen, she didn't take it home, and they give it to Angela Bassett. And I'll be honest. Angela, they didn't give it to Angela Bassett. Yeah, that's what I said. They, I'm sorry, they gave it to uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. Damn, why am I getting names mixed up? I don't know. They gave it to fucking uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. I'll be honest. Jamie Lee Curtis, when she won, I said, damn, she had a dope-ass performance. But when I sat back and thought about it, I, I would have gave it to Angela Bassett. I think they both smoked their roles equally, if I'm keeping it a hundo. No way. I think what Angela Bassett had to do emotionally, 
She I had think, a better performance. I think Angela Bassett definitely had the better emotional performance, and I do think Angela Bassett should have won. I think she should have got that Oscar win where I feel like she had the better performance, but also she should have got a little bit of a nudge for how much y'all have, like, totally, like, did her dirty, disregarded some of her work in the past, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, she, but, you know, also I'm looking at it in a, in a different way where it's like, you know, I don't know. It's like a, it's not. It's like letting somebody smack you, right? And then you get mad about it, but you don't really do anything. And then you come back again, and they smack you again, and you come back, and they know at any point of this night, I could smack the fuck out of you, and you won't even really do shit, and you will come back next year. That's a nice, you know, yeah. Segue with the smack just, at the Oscars. Oh, okay. I see yeah. what you did. Mm -hmm. You see the way I did scrap. All right, Flip the Karen. lines and go rewind. I said nothing. And you go and see the way y'all did that. Just <laughs> keep getting back to your I point. I said flip the lines and hit rewind. Anyway. But it's fine. He tried. Terrence, please. <laughs> Jesus okay, Christ. Okay, okay, okay. Um, sorry. Uh, I just feel like. What do you mean the by way that, we this lose? whole smack thing? So should she not give a fuck about the Oscars because she's been snubbed before? Nah, I'm just saying I do think Angela Bassett should have won, but also I feel like some of the it, it turned into a real big thing. You know what I'm saying? It turned into her reaction to not winning. It turned into everybody talking about the loss. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, damn, you know what? It felt like Oscar. It felt like a, a tradition almost, the way... We were happy to see everybody, and then we spent our night talking about how, oh, we didn't win. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this person should have won, but they gave it to. So all I'm going to say is y'all know how I get it off. The way, that we, the way we react when we lose is one thing, because we ain't never going to be happy about that, I don't think. But I do think that we can fix shit with the way that we win. Bro, you know how I was thinking that? Like, yo, we're going to be upset when we don't win. It's cool, you know? Right. I just think when we win, we need to act like, in my opinion, we need to act like we're supposed to be up there. We're supposed to win. That way, when we lose, it doesn't really look like this jab for real. You know what I'm saying? I feel like people do not look at how it looks when it's you versus this person, you lose, and then you're salty about it. You sit in there upset about it. Everybody's talking about how you lost, right? Okay. And how you should have you should have won. This is bullshit. This person should have won. The way you react in that situation, I feel like is important. I thought Angela Bassett handled it fine. I don't think she handled it bad either. I'm more so talking about us as a collective. Like, I don't think that like I said, you're gonna be upset when you lose. Me, I think if when we win, if we get up there and not make it look like it was a fucking godsend. Or it was a fucking, our prayers have been answered and it was black girl magic that we want. If we get up there and act like we're supposed to be on a winning side of shit, then when we lose, the conversation isn't always about how we never and we always get done wrong and we'll never get respect. Like, I don't think it's like, now hold on, wait, because I get what you're saying, but Angela Bassett should have won for uh, What's Love Got to Do With It, right? A long time ago. Angela Bassett has had... Should have been nominated for Malcolm X. I don't care what nobody says. No, yeah. She should have been... There's plenty of... A lot of work that she's done, mm -hmm. right, where she should have been nominated. For a long time, she hasn't gotten the honor that we feel like she deserves, right? Mm -hmm. And so she literally is a queen mother in terms of how we all look at Angela Bassett. Like, she is one of our icons, our legends. And I'm talking about black folks. So... I get what you say about how you can't be, when we win, we got to act like we supposed to win. You've made that point before, and I believe in that. But the same way motherfuckers lose the Grammy or the same way we felt when Chiwetel didn't win for 12 years and they gave it to Matthew McConaughey, mm -hmm. right? He did a great job. We just thought Chiwetel should win. The same way motherfuckers didn't like when Leo lost to, uh, I forget what he lost to, but... When you want somebody to win, especially when they haven't gotten what they deserve, we have to be, I don't want to say we have to, but we're going to be upset about that. 100. You know? Yeah. So, because what are you supposed to do? Were we supposed to not be mad that Angela Bassett lost? Not at all. I'm not saying that at all. 
like I said, we're going to be upset when we lose. That's totally fine. It's just a lot of our, a lot of times when we lose, we really don't even be upset about performance v performance. Our shit tar- starts to, our shit starts to turn into this race thing where we're now talking about how we're underappreciated as a people within the art. And I'm like, damn, a loss cannot always turn into us talking about how we're undervalued, underappreciated as a, as a people within the art. Like, come on. Like, if we're going to progress, we have to kind of, like, take that tag off of us. Now, how do you... Talking about how you're not appreciating it and how stuff don't happen for you is how you get forward. I was not saying, ignoring it. The, the girl that was in Whale, the Asian lady, Asian uh-huh. actress. I think her name is Hong. Huh? What is her name? For, she was nominated for uh, Best Supporting, and she her name is uh, Same Hong Same what's her name? Hong Chow. Yeah. Like, she killed it. The, um, like the dude said that one for everything, everywhere, all at once, the supporting actor. Um, there's a big community of people that helped him get to this big stage. It's, that Oscar stage is world-renowned. Like, it's a worldwide, everybody wants to get their thing. So I'm sure that this lady, Hong Chow, she probably has a... Uh, a gang of people behind her from her country. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's probably the same ethnicity as her. And they probably wanted to see her win. When she loses, you know what I'm saying? Or when anybody else lose, we don't see this discourse from their community talking about how they're under underappreciated and as a as a as a whole. It turns into a fucking big topic. You know what I'm saying? I know what you're saying. It's yeah. just, okay, we didn't win this time, but we're going to get him next year. We want to turn every single one of our losses into, like, this big dra- dramatic, oh, my God, they don't want to see a black woman win. Nah, you're right. Like, it's time we start kind of understanding or we read the room. Like, we know what the Oscars are going to do. Like, we say it every year, so it's no point of being surprised. Oh, we didn't win? Cool. Well, you know what? The difference between, like, a Hong child. The difference between a Stephanie Sue and even a Michelle Yeo, to me, is those communities, right? You yeah. notice, even with uh, Kei Hui Kwan, who won the Special Supporting, when they get on stage and they talk about where they come from, they are honored to be there. Like, it haven't really been this big, you know, thing for them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They, they're a lot of, a lot of, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Michelle Yeo is the... First of her ethnicity to, or of of a few people to hit the stage yeah. for them. Same with him and same with Stephanie Sue and stay, same with Hong Chao, where they're more grateful, and I'm speaking just kind of like broadly, but to me, they're more bra- they're more grateful to like be like, yo, we got somebody that got nominated. Hopefully they win, but the nomination is huge for us. For black folks, we've been getting nominated. We've been getting nominated. We've been losing. So a loss for other folks is probably just like, yay, we got nominated. But for us, it's like, all right. It's getting to the point where I have ADHD and that's fucked up. You making fun of me? What is he talking about? Conversation that's what that with is. I have ADD and it's fucked up. <laughs> Wait, what? You making fun of my... What's wrong you with making him? making fun of me. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Um, but to me, for us, it just do hit a little bit different because yeah. you get snub, 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 snub. They're not going to say shit when they lose because you just start getting nominated. Sorry. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We've been going through this shit since the nineties. You know what I'm saying? And this is my thing. This You've been getting smacked in your face since the nineties and you keep coming back. Now this is what I'll say. So since we know you're going to come back, why will we say anything about the slap? This is my thing. If you're going to just keep allowing yourself to get smacked and you come back, this is what I'll say because at a certain point, you sound like the people that say, I don't want to come because y'all might slap me again. This nigga has came every time and we smack him every time he's coming back. But you don't get smacked every time. And sometimes you got to smack these motherfuckers back. And it worked. They gave out some sympathy awards. Green Book. Um, Moonlight Joint. I'm uh, not saying for Mahershala, where he had 15 minutes on screen. They gave him supporting actor just because just because he was like, yeah, what you going? What you doing, youngster? Well, yeah, what's going on? All right. I guess there's a nigga put gold teeth in his mouth. I don't think that we get smacked every time. 
or that getting smacked is cool. I just think the way that we move afterwards should just be a little bit different. Like, if we don't react, then did we really get smacked? But that's the thing. You know what I'm saying? If we're not we've always so reactionary with this pain and this hurt of all of these years of not getting picked at their show, if we just kind of turn that off, but then it does. It, then it's not really a smack. It's a smack when we sit in there crying and then we are upset about it. And it's like, come on, y'all. Like, okay, Angela Bassett didn't win. We're She's supposed great to just to take us. the smack and just not say anything. Just tough it out. I don't think we realize what that we're turning it into a smack. I don't think it's a smack until we... Nah, but it is a smack that she didn't win. Is it? Is. it? Yes. Is it? She was supposed to win. Yes. And it's the thing. Black folks have always responded to the smack where other people just be like, all right, whatever. We always the one to say, hey, this is some bullshit. And we've created many opportunities for folks because of that. And this is just another one of those situations. But you know what I did want to say? Because some people will say, why do you give a fuck about the Oscars? Why do you give a fuck about the Grammys? That's kind of where I'm at with it, where I'm like, is it really a smack that we didn't win an award at a show where we always don't win an award? Why do we put so much stock into? And I know why, because it is the most prestigious award of the the, the art. If you you win an Oscar or a Grammy... And the reason why artists still give a fuck about it is because once you're Grammy Award winning or Oscar Award winning or even Grammy nominated, Oscar nominated, you can get paid more. You can charge way more now because at the highest stage, I've been there. You know what I'm saying? Man. That's why people still give a fuck about it. It's the highest stage because we make it that. That's the craziest part. But Terrence, no. like We, we can, make it. You can literally charge more if you win an Oscar. That's just kind of how we have it set up right now. We didn't set that up. That's for Nicole Kidman. Now Jamie Lee Curtis as an Oscar winner can charge more when they call her for Scream. Now you got to put Oscar award winning. Trust me, I understand. Uh, I'm saying like if we had like, and it wouldn't ever happen, but like if we had like our black actresses and actors get together and be like, yo, we're going to put more stock into our own thing. And it, and it beca- imagine it became like a collective thing like, Somebody like Angela Bassett saying, yo, we putting mad love on something else. Like what the NAACP Awards should be. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's the NAACP Awards that it would be, but like, I don't know. If we had our own shit, we really wouldn't care about winning an Oscar. And I don't care what nobody say. We definitely do do great shit in the industry. And if we didn't care to win that award, that doesn't mean we're going to stop doing great shit in the industry. You know? You're right. You're right. It's just us trying How to, you know. How can we ever get from under that if our biggest and brightest are still slaves to it? Like, the ones that make it out aren't putting us in a different position and telling us to... Nobody's trying to rewire how we already think. Everybody's just going what it's always been. Like, what if one day we don't watch the fucking Oscars anymore? We do watch the NAACP Awards way harder because somebody was able to say, hey, everybody, let's just look at this. It wouldn't, it's not going to be a nigga like me and you. It would be an Angela Bassett, a Denzel Washington. If Denzel Washington said, yo, this year I want everybody to watch the NAACP Awards. I'm going to executive produce it. We it's going to be different. It's yeah. going to be different. Think about it. Him saying that is like, yo, this is Denzel. Y'all don't know why he's doing this. But like, even him getting behind that, and yo, I want to see what other stars is getting behind it. Let's, let's love ours. It can't be a nigga like Common. It can't be, it has to be a dog. It has to be somebody who does this shit. Because we'd get behind a Denzel or Angela Bassett or somebody that's big time. They're not going to get behind Common on his, on his, yo, yo, we trying to have some fun. So on BET, instead of jog, we about to run. I hey, know yo, you know. instead of coming in second place, I'm aiming for number one. We're First not of all, I don't know common. why you're on Common. I'm not, I'm not common following Common, common to no the reason. promised land. This is what I'll say. Denzel Washington, who does this shit? Let who me, has one Let me respond. Damn. I should be able to get in my bag about some shit. Niggas bag is you like you carrying one of them cotton sacks. But I feel like it's cool. I feel like I let him get in his bag, y'all. And I have not been tripping off on him getting in his bag. I feel like I haven't. This motherfucker's rapping. This is what I'll say. Cause I agree with you. I agree with you that somebody that 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 will be dope. But the reality is that until somebody does that. In order for you to continue to break ceilings in the industry, we gotta still fight. We gotta keep still fighting for those awards, and we can't just not say shit. 
Like, if Angela Bassett would have lost and nobody would say nothing, damn. Guess what? Not, you'll just continue to... Nothing will happen. Because who is going to do what you're saying to do? Jay-Z, Diddy, Beyonce, Brianna, our billionaires? They're not really thinking about that. That's why I said it wouldn't happen. Because we would need it to happen from the top. And the top looks at the... I mean, everybody looks at the, the Oscars, you know? They look at it different. But you know what? Shout out to everybody that... uh tuned into the Oscars. It's something that we watch every year. Hold His on, wait, before we get there. Okay. Shout out to Rihanna Navy on stage, pregnant, okay. doing her fucking thing. Just got to finish the Oscars with that. That was dope. If we, if we moving out of the Oscars shit, Terrell is a hating ass nigga. We're not going to add his hatred. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm not saying anything. Shout because out to Rihanna. Like, for her it's like Rihanna has to do a Beyonce Coachella type performance every performance now, which she haven't even done this shit. I didn't. Say I'm anything. sorry, I'm bu I'm busy making billions of dollars while while y'all are over there struggling, and you know what we're talking about. So anyway, what are we struggling? Let's not talk about my struggles or my performance because we can talk anything. about performance struggle. Terrence, I didn't even say what when? we didn't talk about performance when? struggle. Who who who's ever had that problem? Let's talk about, Terrence, Terrence, talk about a performance Terrence. struggle. Jay, let me tell you something. Cause look, look, he's talking about. Let me let tell, tell you something. something. Because you can't get real disrespectful about did the you hear what I said? I'm the greatest at but that. But did you just hear what I said, though? You got your law. You heard what I said? You had to leave I this. I said we over here making billions. You had to leave this oh. game to go do when that I, with yeah. clothes. Okay, yeah, but guess and what? Makeup, cool. But I'm making. Never my, talk about this performance shit my, because I run oh, this. But, but I perform this way. I perform over here. It's a reason why. Uh, you know why it. Terrence. And it's a reason why I got when a you billion. Put out you trying to catch up. When you put out Pony Replay, put out, I said, stop the out. track. Let me stay fast. Told you to be a minute and I'll be right back. Let's put our wallets together right now. Because I'm not doing, I'm not doing Dubai performances for money. You, you heard me? Girl I'm, not doing, I'm not doing Dubai performances for money. We're doing Super Bowls. Do you know how much I got paid for that? <laughs> 25 million for that. How much did you get paid for the Super Bowl? How much you get paid for the Super Bowl? They didn't pay you 25 million for it. Fuck out of here. We just did 25, I Rihanna, 25 million for one night. I've been living full like a fucking beetle, something, something, something with a fucking eagle. Tell I the Grammys, fuck that over a shit. To girls you dreamt of being in She my said, hey, Beyonce, world. have you ever seen a crowd going a shit? Bow down, bitches. Because let me tell you something about Beyonce, that. Beyonce, I, I mean, Rihanna I said, even, stack my money fast and go. Fast, fast, fast. We did. We So we, t look, tell that's just what we do on a daily. I'm sorry. Over we don't need Super Bowls. That's what we do. We did 80 stadiums last year. That's why I said we do perform. We do performances, and let's talk uh, about we do performances because we got million. We got a billion dollars, so this we know how to perform on, 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 on a sheet. Let Let's but get back to your girl. When, when we talk about that area for y'all, and we ain't we ain't really talking about the same type of performance. Exactly, because it's a whole number level. Now, that you're we right. Into. You're right from what I'm talking about. Well, if you're talking about. Terry, come on, we got billions. If y'all don't think Beyonce worth a billion dollars, then you're crazy. First of all, I'm I'm worth a billion dollars. Yeah, you're right. She is. She is. I'm not exactly. Hating, but we just Billy's different. Our Billy's different, you know. Terrence, please let's keep it above. This motherfucker's deflecting. Let's keep it on. Let, let me on. I wasn't even gonna say nothing about Rihanna's before. Now performance. we moving on. We moving I on. I wasn't gonna say Girl, anything. We moving on. But let's keep it above. The Beyonce comparisons can stop. Uh, that's it. That's okay. It. All right. Whatever. We never were comparing to her anyway. It should stop. <laughs> we weren't comparing anyway. Cause we be chilling. And y'all start saying, "Oh," and y'all was y'all. Uh -huh. All right. Because I'm way more like tapped I said, in, bro. Terrell's a I hating see ass nigga. I be tapped in, and I see when it, I, I don't say shit. When I, when I was talking about that performance, rock. I said it was great. I said it was great. I, I'm talking to him, and I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with this nigga? That was a great performance. He's got everything to fucking great. say. Just a reminder. This my shit. What'd she say? Bow down. Fuck out of here. Y'all don't know. I hate to get in my beehive bag. I hate it. I hate it. He's saying he hate it, but he's deep in. Because y'all pull us. Y'all always dragging us into shit we don't even need to be in. I was trying to get to the QT shit. Why try, trying to talk about that? She was. Let me tell you, she was. He <laughs> gonna say shit, nigga. That's hating. I'm not gonna say shit. I wallet, I wallet, I wallet crazy. We doing this shit is the gimme. We been about this money. The Beyonce. You forgetting that her up? husband said, Corner? "How many billionaires came from home? Hope crib. You know who decorated Hope crib? Fuck out of here. Do you I know? count three. Me, Ye, and Re. Guess what? I decorated that crib. Well, guess what? Fuck out of here. More, more than your wifey. Tell her catch up. Uh, tell her the way we make it rain is a bad difference. Jesus and this Christ. is what I, this is another thing. You talking all of that shit, but I mean we performing at the Oscars. We doing big thing. That's a Navy on stage. I don't think we've ever seen Beyonce perform at the Oscars. I mean you can tell me if I'm wrong, but when she performed that shit for King Richard, she was up to she was at somebody tennis court somewhere and somebody she, tennis court outside. He's forgetting that Beyonce performed he at the like, Oscars Damn, for she the not Lions. Even there. Beyonce performed when she was pregnant with twins at the Oscars. 
and nah, she wasn't it. at the Oscars. She was at the Oscars. So real, she wasn't at the Oscars. Her ass was like some streets down the street, the same way Jay Z did his whole shit. How many billionaires should come from home crib? This nigga's on the street somewhere. He's not even in the venue with niggas. Same thing with Beyonce. Hey, look, Rihanna sang in front of all them people. Stage fright is a real thing. She had to overcome when that did she too. do the uh pregnant and having a kid? No, she did the Lion King. All the King. criticism that's coming from She did the Lion King drain at that Grammys. I'm sorry, I wasn't an Oscar. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Pregnant with twins. It's smoking. Your girl was struggling to hit notes. Let's move forward. But she don't get the pregnant with twins cat. She we don't get the pregnant. We struggled to hit notes when we was. We already knew. Terrence, can we please move forward? Terrence's beloved, Quentin Tarantino, just announced his 10th film. I don't know if y'all know, but QT is only doing 10 movies. That's it. He said he was only well, said doing he was only doing ten movies, right? And yeah. then I'm hanging it up, and I'm just going to do criticism and whatever. So this is the tenth film that he announced. It's called The Movie Critic, um, and all I know is that there is a. It's set in the late '70s, mm-hmm. which is to no surprise, and it has a female lead attached. So, last female lead was what Kill Bill, for female lead, I think. Django was male led. It's not gonna be Inglorious Bastards, but that was kind of Inglorious was kind of female led with Soshana. Kinda, yeah, it was. So I mean, I guess we can go with that one. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I wanted to ask you on the pod because you know you already said something about it, but yeah, honestly, everybody, I don't know if you know. I'm sure he has a lot of fans out there, but I don't know if people follow him, but or follow his career. But he said that he wants to be a movie critic later in his life. So him coming out with a movie called The Movie Critic, it's like, okay, bro. Um, I said this on my Twitter, but like one thing that I've always thought was honorable about him in that artist, he always talks about how he writes his dialogue personally. Not super personal, but he's like, there's no way you can go through a breakup and write a story and that breakup not come out in that right. story. Whether it's from a character breaking up with a something that they love or like a from like a basketball team or like they they mom or something like that. But that's how you know you're writing true from like your core. I always thought that, that was dope because believe it or not, broken right. But this seems to be like a little too personal. Like the last movie you did or the last movie he did was this ode to filmmaking. It was dope, but it was also very much for the people who love filmmaking. And I mean making, not, not just watching movies. I mean, if you like to make them. It's like, oh, we're shooting on the set. And wow, they're, this is how they shoot. That's cool. But like, we want to see you just do some shit. Yeah. We want to see you make a movie like Taxi Driver or a movie like, just even, make something. Even Jackie Brown. Just with do the, something different, yeah. What was the book he made Jackie Brown off of? Like a tash or something like that, something tash. Rum, rum punch. Rum punch. Yeah, mm-hmm. like take like a Elmore book. Leonard. Yeah, yeah, take a book and redo it. Like that was dope. I would I, love to see him do something like yeah. that. I would love to see him take a risk. I would love to hit, see him get out there and do some shit that we can't all point to as close to home for you. Like, oh, you're gonna do a movie called a movie critic about a guy who's probably a tough or a girl, tough movie critic. I don't know. And like I said, I told Terrell, this man can surprise. You'll be like, what? And then the movie's great. He's yet he has never done yeah. something that was terrible. You know what I'm saying? The fact that he's doing this just makes me think, okay, do we really want to see a QT movie about a fucking movie critic? I trust. And what look, QT is a fucking film geek. So it's it's in a 1970s. So we have to watch somebody who's a critic of 1970 cinema. So he's gonna have all of these 70s cinema references, and she's probably gonna be tough. And he's going to cast these famous directors to be in the movie and probably have problems with her cr- criticism. QT, take your nerd ass and just <laughs> retire. And that's my fucking boy. I would definitely, he's probably one of the only stars that I would see and I'd go up to him and be like, yo, let me get an autograph. Or, mm-hmm. yo, your movies is actually dope as fuck. Like, not change my life type shit, but I actually really fuck with the shit that you did with nah, your career. Yeah. But Your favorite. Yeah. So, like... I can speak honestly when I'm like, okay, you talked about how it's a young man's game. Just hang this shit up, bro. Yeah. We don't want to watch you. You riding, you riding close to 70. I told Terrell, if you was a film, if you, like, let's say you were, your, your favorite musician is getting ready to go and be a dolphin trainer, and then they put out one more album called Dolphin. Just retire. <laughs> Just go do the dolphin shit. Like. No, yeah. I understand that too, because, but I, one thing I do, I trust Quentin Tarantino's pen. 
his pen is of the best ever in terms of cinema, in terms of him being daring. So I, I mean, honestly, I, I'll be, I'm still excited to see what he's going to do. Hopefully, Robert Richardson is attached to lens it, mm -hmm. because. But you're right. I mean, Not everything yet. you said was spot on. I think it just speaks to how your passion can get real close to your career, and when it changes, your career changes. Hold on, wait though. He's doing his passion as a career. It's the same thing for him. No, nah, but like I think he has a newfound passion for film criticism. Oh yeah. So yeah, now yeah, instead yeah. of you want to do like a war movie or you want to do a mystery, you want to do a movie about your next passion. You know what I mean? Uh huh. It'd be like Kobe when he was playing basketball, saying, "Yeah, so like I'm coming out with a uh, while I'm while he's playing basketball, he's like my next shoe is going to be dedicated to children's books." Like, oh, shouldn't you just decorate a shoe for your, like, your last season for the game? Oh, you get are getting ready to do that. So you should just probably go and do that, right? Yeah, Once your passion changes, so will your job if your passion is your job. Nah, especially, yeah, when you can control what the what it's about. Uh, would you date a police officer? Would I date a police officer? Mm -hmm. Like a miss officer when I get up oh, falling, yeah. Yeah. Got a weezy. Uh, no. What's up, the ladies, Mrs. Officer, Mrs. Officer, tell you, can you please take these cuffs off? Um, what you <laughs> Something like that. What's Wayne joints in that joint? Uh, he says uh, emergency only. Hold on, wait. I can tell you. All I need to know is the first Just know one. The, the Mrs. Officer by Lil Wayne, the way it starts, fire, man. That shit sounds like he a says, Wednesday, summer day. It's Wednesday. You about to get you a... He said, uh, doing a drop, doing a drop in the latest spot. Drop. I got stopped by, by a lady cop. cop. She, had me she got me thinking I can date a cop. But the uniform came with so up. tight. She read me my rights. That I have the right to remain, remain silent. silent. Now I got a wildin'. Sounded like a siren. Talk now I got a hollin'. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, best. So look. He smoked that. Carter three, one of the best albums of all time. That's a reach. <laughs> Considering <laughs> everything that we know about the world today and... Social climate and you know what I'm saying, your dating preferences and the things that you got lined up. This nigga sitting here looking like he works at a pizza shack. You look like the delivery boy. You ready to you ready to throw your apron on and get on the bike and yang, 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 so you can get to the next block and deliver the pizza and then yang, 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 you trying to hurry up and get back. Look, this nigga's chain popped. This nigga had to flip his bike over. His chain popped. He flipping his bike over. Now he thinks he's a mechanic. Yang, yang, yang. He tightening his wheel. That's who you look he like, boy. His bike back over. He He's fitching his gear, so then when he going up a hill, this nigga pedaling fast as shit, but he going uphill. Okay, what this nigga look uh, like? Bro? You look like a wrench. We had to use you in a wrench. You got to push the drain. <laughs> I forgot the totally what I was just That's talk. what you need. We need you to uh, come and put the chain back on. When you got finished delivering pizzas, there was a one last customer that came in, and it's a and it's a police officer. She she fucking with you, you know? She said she fuck with your, your vibe type different you know what i'm saying she said that you got she liked the pizza deliveries <laughs> laughing at shorty so uh, laughing at shorty but you're delivering pizzas <laughs> but a female said, cop coming and say i fuck with your vibe type no what i'm the saying hell? this is just, this young is just what she think uh she's not gonna say that she coming up to you off the this is this is pressure you just know that she uh a police officer you're not fucking with that no 100 percent no i can't talk to a cop okay you got her sounding like a smooth, like Dom type joint. No, nah, I'm just saying she came up to you. No, no, she's not gonna come up and say that. Is she that, like I'm a? Just uh, she just think your vibe type different. No, nah, I can't. She do come it, up to you looking like uh somebody that you fuck with, you know. Let's say okay, let's say it's Megan Good, right? Okay, Megan yeah. Good, Megan first good of all, shout out to Megan Good. She's smoking the post breakup. Just look, Megan Good did. What all girls do when they break up, which is you was looking real safe and homey when you was in a relationship. It was godly. It was all pastor's wife, you know? Now, when you're not with bruh, you actually are looking fire. And you're not doing anything that couldn't have been done when you was with bruh. So to say, oh, you got to attract them. I Fellas, mean, we do the same thing. We get in a relationship. Nah. Put on a little relationship weight. Fellas, y'all know what I'm talking about. Your girl be looking like you ain't never seen when y'all break up. You said, oh, hell no. Nah. She, look, where she get that top? <laughs> you, you're feeling like it's shit. It's experience right there. <laughs> it's like, where the fuck she go? Oh, she out again? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. All you doing is, you know, balling. You playing 2K. You done created another build. <laughs> 
nigga, I'm gonna go big man. I'm gonna go big man with my extra time. <laughs> she out there getting it. Y'all see Dirk tripping like shit. I know what Dirk going through. That's why I told Terrell. Like the girl, uh, the girl said, Dirk, Dirk just like me. Nigga, you a loser. Fuck you, bitch. You a loser the fuck. These jicks, these bitches be out here listening to Whoa, Terrence. We supposed to be not doing that. You wildin'. Really? You lost your mind. <laughs> They be out here listening to. Anyway, you see how you get in the soapbox? I see the games we play. It ain't nothing we can do, fellas. Officer Hoint, that training day ain't never coming. Officer Hoint, boy, that's who you look like. Horton here's a who, boy, you. We were talking about the cop, and we said if Megan Good was a cop, and you de destroyed and derailed the whole story. Thomas the train face ass, boy. Who do you look like? You look like JJ the Jet playing like shit, boy. Weird <laughs> when as they fuck, said how much wood could a wood chuck chuck, they were talking about you. <laughs> He thought that they was... made this song for you, nigga. How much could you chuck? <laughs> chuck, chuck, boy. If a woodchuck could chuck. <laughs> could he chuck wood? Boy, that's what you look like. You look like you built a few dams. <laughs> you you got a real notification. You got real notoriety in the uh, Beavers amongst the wild. Dams. Beavers build dams, I thought. You look like you was on Angry Beaver like shit, boy. Weird <laughs> ass. You used to watch Angry Beaver and Invader Zim like shit. You was a weird boy. <laughs> yeah, that's who you really look like. <laughs> Invader Zim? He was a weird motherfucker, wasn't he? Right. I bet we could relate to bro now, though. I know. All of the all of the characters that were young and irritated, you can you can relate to them now. Nah, yeah. Like the brain from Pinky and the Brain. Squidward. Yeah. Invader Zim. Look, uh, y'all remember Ass Told by Ginger? Fire. Ooh. First of all, that was a great story. That was a great story. The story in that joint. And you see, that was a show that in, in that show. They muddled the line. They that was a show about puberty, yeah, right, and growing up and adolescent. But you see how they didn't turn it into a gender. Yeah. What proud family do? He doesn't even like the black girls. Oh <laughs> my god, yeah, what? that's 2023 shit. We grew up in a, in a golden time. The like, shade room writers are writing the mm -hmm. the script for this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, Rugrats grown up too. Like yes. muddled the line between like adolescence, like a serious teenage problems, like versus just kids. Nah, shit, shit, shit that we should have watched, yeah. like. They finally got a crush type shit. All type right, shit. back. All right, my bad, y'all. We finally get into the topic, and we finally get into this shit. <laughs> Look, my bad. before we get there, we got a new ad for our discount code. <laughs> Manscaped. <laughs> like, damn, did these niggas get to it? Hey, look, this is what I'll say. I wouldn't date a police officer just because I just, I just couldn't do it. You just couldn't I do don't it. believe in the, uh, I can't, I wouldn't want to be adjacent to that but what if she was putting that pressure on you when she was coming at you like yo you see these handcuffs i'm I asking all the crazy things with these handcuffs mm -hmm. and you know i can say i bet y'all oh, do yeah, i yeah, said yeah. look i already know y'all do y'all put freddie so, gray in handcuffs and threw him in the back of that van so what would you do what would and you then we do don't even know how he lost his life the handcuffs just tell me some shit that you would do see this nigga's an idiot this nigga <laughs> will be stuck you will be stuck <laughs> you'll end up dating a cop and she'll be beating your ass <laughs> See, this is what I was going to say. Everybody's thinking about the, the social climate when it comes to dating a cop. But, like, low-key, what if it's just their job? What if it's just the way that they get money? I protested for Freddie Gray. No, you didn't. No, you did not. What if she did? You didn't. You could never. You did not. You did not. Okay. Show me your pictures. Show me you with your sign. <laughs> Let's get to it. I'm not, I'm not doing it, bro. I can't. I would say, y'all, look, this is my thing. Would I want to date a police officer? Nah, because I don't like the stuff that comes with being a, the officer. Like, you have a rough day at work. Your rough day at work is could be danger. You know what I'm saying? You put your life in danger. You got to go around in, in certain situations that's, like, tough. I, 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 wanna say, I do want to say I got mad respect for all of the police officers that listen to this. Y'all could be in y'all whip right now about to pull a nigga over, but you're turning me down. Look, you turn me down. Look at this nigga speeding. Hit your, hit your lights. You know, I got mad respect for all of the officer, officers out there. I'm not knocking y'all hustle. However, I do think for a spouse to have like a significant other that's a police officer, that's a lot to think about. As, look, the way people look at how you looking at police officers. Imagine somebody that you love. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Was an officer and they hear you talking about like that. Oh, y'all hear Terrell talking like this? And some of y'all say I should smack his face because what he's talking about doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I have people he's that talking. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have people that I, have people that I love that are police officers 
And I have had to keep it 100 when my boy Jay is a, not, a, I don't want to say he's an officer, but he's like, you know, nah, yeah, 100%. has worked, you know, in enforcement. And we have had a conversation about that. You know what I'm saying? You can't be a bro and say, I'm trying to date this chick and she says she don't date officers, bruh. Why you think you talking to this black woman and you wonder why she won't date an officer? Come on, bro. You know why. Yeah. On some, on some, I had to, yeah, you got to talk to him on some Deontay Wilder shit. You know we've been fighting 400 years, years to this day. day. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, look, this is my thing. What if she come up to you in the vibe crazy? Like, you know, like, what if I she would, say, I wouldn't trust it. She can get me set you up. You look like you want to be arrested. And you know what you say back? What I do? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go I'm in my bag with it. Terrell, Terrell. see, I fuck with that. This nigga's kinky. You fuck with an officer, right? And you pull up on Shawty at work, and you know you can say your shit. Y'all know, y'all know what I'm thinking about. I'm fucking with that job like. All right, bet. Let's look at the benefits. We know all the negative shit. Fuck this okay, nigga. Cool. Uh, all right, let's play. Let's play ball. You're literally never in danger for real when you with her or him. Ladies, I know y'all whole situation different. Y'all can probably talk to a nigga that's a that's an officer. No, they cannot. They will all tell right, well, yeah, you. All right, ladies, you stay in here. <laughs> Put a yeah, chair back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like, to me, you're always safe because you are with somebody who is a law protector. Mm -hmm. They nah, they know the law. Who want to be with the person that's in charge of keeping everybody doing the right thing? What if they? We can might keep be trying chill. party late. You yeah, know what I'm saying? We know. don't need this motherfucker saying. See, you say that until some shit go down, and then you like, since everybody know Brad is the officer. See, we talk shit about feds until we got a friend or somebody that's on our side here. Nah, let him keep talking because we just gonna have Brad take <laughs> his ass up out of here. <laughs> and meanwhile, you don't like fucking cops. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So my thing is like, Terry, don't make it seem like we have no reason. Trust. I'm not saying Terrell don't like cops. Watch him out. Put that on, I'm not putting that on his name. I well, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of them. Well, you know what I mean. I'm not saying you a cop hater or anything like that. No, you know, no, I'm, I'm saying, saying you know, we have our reasons. Don't make it seem like oh y'all don't like cops, but when you gonna need one? That's that. That's that bullshit. Nah, see, that my thing is, I respect some of the people that are feds that have jobs and, and low, low key they not and they not around here saying. You know, like they're not thinking about the there next bust some, when they with you. It's some cool niggas that have uh It's some cool that niggas are, that, that have police. It's just when shit go down, I be wondering where they at. I feel you. I what feel you, you think? Yeah. Do you have to be quiet? And then how honorable is that? That blue, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers start forgetting they black and start thinking they blue. Can you imagine having a certain relationship with a <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> I'm thinking about you just being a freaky ass nigga. You a freaky <laughs> ass nigga? <laughs> That's you. <laughs> I'm not. I'm thinking about there's some benefits, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know what I wanted to tell you? Let me just say this. We ain't worried about this nigga. This, she got a gun. She take her. She take her gun and put it on the dresser. <laughs> and what? You remember what happened to my man? Have you ever seen the brothers? Yes, and I. Do you remember think about, how, think about how dope that was. What was his name? Come on out, Terry. This motherfucker, she, she was shooting this motherfucker windows. Mm -hmm. That's See, to me, that's like that dang, <laughs> that's like having a pit bull. That, like, that's like getting a pit bull. You get a pet tiger, you walk in that motherfucker. Because you know that this motherfucker can snap at any minute. Fake on my wife, she'll shoot you. She is an officer. She'll shoot me. Terry, this is a, he's a, he's a, he's a king. I'm starting to not want to be this powerhouse person. Maybe I just get somebody in my house that's the powerhouse. She is a, my wife is an officer. I don't want to lead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm out Fellas, y'all got it. I was on TikTok the other day, right? And it was this uh this clip. Did you say TikToks? TikTok. Okay. I was on TikToks yesterday. <laughs> now that's what people say. <laughs> I was on the Instagrams the other day. Oh, okay, yeah, I feel you. All right, yeah. <laughs> no, it's not the right thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> when people say that you just let them rock. Let them go. I was on the Twitter scope. You know I get on Twitter scope. And <laughs> I was like, hold up, nigga. Hey, look, I'm on TikTok the other day. And it was a uh, TikTok that I came across that said it was about the Titanic, yeah. right? And it was talking about how when you look at the movie Titanic, um, like the moonlight lit lights the whole sea. So even when the ship's going down, 
Leonardo DiCaprio, Kate Winslet, everybody in the water, including the ship, is lit by the moon. Like, there's so much light. But in reality, when the ship went, when the Titanic went down, all of the lights went pitch black. Everything they lost black. electricity mid-sink. Yeah. And it, there was no moonlight from the survivors, they said this, from the people that survived. There was no light. No light. There was no moonlight out. It was a pitch black night. People drowned in pitch black darkness in the middle of the ocean with no land this way and no land that way. And I said, damn, that's some scary ass shit. It is. It is. And then I'm on TikTok. So I went to the comments and I'm like, trying to see what motherfuckers say. Damn, this is crazy. First comment, damn, this is crazy. You Second comment, yo, I can imagine. That's my biggest fear. Terrifying. Third comment says, they didn't allow black folks on the uh, Titanic, so I don't give a fuck. And I said, what the fuck, fuck is she talking about? And so the old me, you know how motherfuckers do. We hear some shit, and then we just run with it and don't verify. But I said, hmm, let me actually go and, and verify my research because... This is a big ass statement because I love Titanic and Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. It's one of my favorite Leo movies to watch. I always skip to the part when the boat goes down. Idiot, right? Not because getting the full effect. Actually, one of my favorite movies, and it's well known too. Anyway, I always, you know, if you skip to the end of Titanic, it's not one of your favorite movies. I'm just saying that. No, nah, well, I watched the whole thing of this one, but it's a five hour, it's a damn four hour movie. James Cameron. This motherfucker can't be stopped. But um, <laughs> anyway, Brody. I said, I'm not about to put that on the Titanic, right? But listen to this. I went and looked it up on the American Black Perceptions of the Titanic Disaster written by Robert G. Wiseboard, right? Listen to this shit. At first glance, it would appear unlikely that any connection could exist between the Titanic catastrophe and black American history. None of that ill-fated vessel's 1,320 passengers was of African descent, and it is improbable that any of the crew of 915 was colored. And so, they was, the niggas was not allowed on the Titanic. You could not even work on that joint. Why? I thought they said that the people who worked on, on the Titanic were some, were some was black. That's bullshit. They were not. They said black folks weren't even allowed on the boat. You could not get on the boat. What are we thinking? When did the boat go down? What year? Damn, yeah, where was we at? What year did this motherfucker sink? Uh, from 1904, 700. I don't even know. All I know is it was a time we couldn't get in the motherfucking boat. And we couldn't even work. That changed my whole perspective on the Titanic and the way I felt about it. Because I'm like, damn, is that karma? You know what I'm saying? Damn, is it karma? I mean, it's kind of fucked up to say karma. I'm not going to say karma, but it's like, damn. Like, oh, no, I'm not going to say fucked up either, but more, you know what I mean. Like It is fucked up, though, because it, it really could have been, people people been some innocent people that have, you know, you know, could have lost their life on the Titanic. My only thing is, that's the crazy thing about being black. You could be giving a fuck about some shit, and then you learn that the people that it happened to didn't give a fuck about you. And so now, if you say, well, fuck everybody, you wrong. Yeah. Wow. There were probably innocents on board. But it's like, damn, I'm supposed to still be empathetic. For the you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That shit was wild. I just wanted to say it on the pod. Nah, that is crazy that the Titanic happened. And, and like, I think, I don't know if y'all know the story about the Titanic, but there was a book that came out before the Titanic called, like, The Unsinkable Ship or some shit. Right? Mm -hmm. And it was about, I don't even know what it was called. You could look it up. There was a book that came out. Like, either some years before the Titanic was ever even made, and it was about a sink. I'm sorry, it was about a ship that was deemed unsinkable, right? Uh -huh. And guess what happened? It hit an iceberg and sunk. And that was a book. And that's not cap. And in real life, the Titanic was huge. It was deemed unsinkable. It hit an iceberg, sank. You heard about the uh, conspiracy that... The Titanic didn't really sink. And it was like a second ship. And it was done for insurance purposes or something like that. I'm not going to get in that conspiracy bag, but just look up the Titanic. If that's the case, how, y'all? 
The ocean is terrifying, though, bro. Man, no way. My algorithm now is a bunch of like, this is how scary the ocean is at night. Yeah. And that shit, I be having dreams. I am definitely terrified of the ocean. I don't want to be anywhere near that shit. I can only imagine being in the pitch black with the water. I did want to talk about what Pat Beverly said about the culture. Right? Okay. Shout out to Pat Bev. Um, he, you know, he has his own pod, um, his own podcast that he does. And in reference to the John Morant situation, he said, this is what he had to say. And I want to know what you think about this. He said, I think music has a lot to do with this now. This him talking about John Morant. He said, you know, especially with this culture, everybody's holding a gun in the video is okay. You know, bling on your teeth is okay. Pants have down your ass, that's okay. So that's like okay now. Back in the day, there was a motherfucker on the beach in a silk shirt talking about some, yeah, baby, let's party like we in the 80s. Everybody had on silk shirts and everybody was dressed the same. It's just a product of what we listen to. The culture now is shoot 'em up, bang, bang, bend you over, I got this money, I'm on a private jet, this and that. That's what the younger generation is, and sadly to say, it shouldn't be based on our music, but it is mostly based on what we listen to, and that's just how it is. So he basically saying that John Morant acting the way he was acting is based on what we listen to. And there's been an age-old conversation about how our music is interpreted, right? There's been, that's been used, and that has been used by both by black folks and by people that oppose black folks in terms of what happens in, you know, some of our inner cities where we blame things like music. But I think there could be a connection to that. And the reason why I say that is because it, 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 it never feels good when somebody says that, right? Like, because there's so many other systemic contributing factors to why people are in the situations that they're in to become violent with each other or to, you know, put on this show of being tough or whatever, right? There's so many, system there's literally systemic situations to speak to about that. Some funny shit. Uh, random nigga up there. Um, but to me, music does have some influence on how people move. Yeah. Biggest example would be all of these kids wearing the Pooh Shiesty mask. You know what I'm saying? I talked about it before. They're not doing, they're doing that shit because that's what they listen to. Or the, these, this is the culture now. Yeet wears a, uh, a ski mask all the time. A lot of these artists that they listen to, the young, the young cats, that's what they do. And then you get the Memphis crowd, which is cool. Memphis is running shit. I want to say running shit, but they, Memphis is doing a lot more. They, they're a lot bigger in terms of who they have out right now than they've ever been. And a lot of the music that's coming out of the space and New York and pretty much everywhere is relatively violent. So I do think it plays a role. I'm not going to say it's the main thing, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't play a role. It's one of those things where I've said, and I've said this, I feel like that's why I kind of feels kind of like repetitive, but I do think that Ja is kind of like influenced by the rap by rap and stuff like that. I think it goes without saying. I mean, it's like not, it's not also like not fair to say. It's like, it's our music. It's what we listen to. Mm -hmm. Like to try to say, it's like trying to make an issue out of the things that we enjoy. It's like, I get it. But like, you know what I mean? Oh, it's the music. It's the music. See, no, see, it's that music. Like it's, it's the age old. They're trying to say that it's our, it's, it's our music. There's so much hip hop. And there's so much music out there that, like, blaming our music is, like, us not wanting to, to me, it's like us not wanting to get to, like, the root problem. So what's the root problem? Because, well, do you see what, like, I get what you're saying. And like I said, it's a lot of systemic issues. But there is a lot of influence that comes out of, like, the music that we listen to. I think it's more so about the lifestyle that's glamorized by, like, the world. I don't think that the music is what is doing it, more so than the lifestyle of the people who make music, you know? But when you, when you position it like it's the music, then it looks like what we're listening to is influencing us. But it really, but what the, it, it be what these niggas be doing outside of making music, you know? 
I don't think we hear so many songs about legit killing niggas. Terrence, you crazy. More so than we hear songs about protecting yourself or Terrence. Or you, everybody's such a everybody's everybody's real tough. Like there is there is definitely hit music where there where it's like rough music, but it's not all of our music. Like, you know what I'm saying? To sit here and say, oh, it's the music, like, just because there's one genre of music, it's okay, so are we gonna when these white boys go shoot up schools, do they ever say, yo, it's the music they listen to? Cause he listens to that dark metal shit. Like now our you, music shouldn't take a hit for some for certain bullshit. Like, just let it be bullshit. Now you right, but at the same time, like I agree with you. Yeah. But at the same time, Danny Green came out and said that all the Grizzlies locker room listened to. He said these motherfuckers listen to NBA Young Boy nonstop. He just recently came out and said he wasn't standing there for any specific reason or in reference to anything, but he just randomly just said that. And honestly, you can't say, oh, we don't make music about killing. Bro, most of the music that is. I don't I, see, I don't think it's fair to say to most. Violence. I don't think it's fair to say most. I would say most. I say a lot of it. You're not listening to most of the music. You're talking about shit. That I do you, listen you come to across. most. It's art, though. It is art. It's not. I think John Morant might be around some niggas that's really about it, and it might not really be. It's not about music. I think Ja might be somebody that. What if Ja is somebody that y'all don't think he is? So you don't. You don't think that the music that niggas listen to, Terrence, and keep it above. You're not keeping it above. You don't think the music that people listen to plays a role in how they... I told you that I've said that I feel like the music plays a role, but I don't think it's the music more so not, than I think it's niggas trying to look like gangsters. I even think the niggas that make music are emulating something that ain't the music. It's like even the niggas that make music are emulating something they're not, which is like a gangster-ass nigga, and Ja is imitating or... I don't know what he's doing, but like I think it comes from that street boy. It's a street thing. Like hip hop is straight from the streets, so I get it. But like IDK, y'all, I just feel like this is how they can smack. This is how they can smack. That's how you can smack two things at once. Like they'll say, "Oh, you fucked up." Well, it's because of the music that you listen to. Now your music that you listen to takes a hit as a whole, and it's like. I get what you're saying because, like I told you, it's used. It's people that there's a lot more systemic issues that are the reason why people even have to portray that lifestyle. So it's always deeper than the music. Yeah. But I mean, come on. It's not it's, all the way. It's off. like I get it. I get it, and I'll say it. Like if we want to say, "Oh, it's the music." All right, bet. Let's draw the line. Yeah, they doing this in the music too. All right, bet. Yeah. This nigga John Morant was listening to Young Boy in the video. He was like, "Y'all ain't gonna slide." See, my thing You're is, getting everybody's this from the music. trying to or everybody's trying to find this origin of where John ja Morant's mentality comes from, and it's so much that they're trying to say, hey, "Look, it's from the music. It's probably from this. It's probably who he's hanging with." What if it's just who he is and y'all didn't know? It's cool, Terrence. But where would he learn that from? You're being naive. You're acting like he just came up with this persona. You don't know him. You don't nowhere. know him. I'm not saying that. I'm, we're not even talking about Ja alone. Nobody, You're trying to talk about where he's being We're not influenced. talking about just Ja. We're talking about how our music influences how these kids or okay, people yeah, that it age. It does. I'm thinking about Ja Morant. He's I'm a part about of it, the though. Fact that he's a part of it. This is an NBA nigga that's talking about, oh, yeah, well, it's probably the music. He's trying to emulate the music. Hold up. Like, we just... Like, it's easy to just sit and say he's trying to be like what's on the music because you really don't want him to be this street nigga like he's saying that he is. I get it. I think it's easier to say, oh, well, we don't know what he's doing. We can't even say it comes from this. But it's a, nah, but, but we can truth, actually though. draw a tie that's to where this shit comes That's actually the truth, though. From. Like, to say he's not hard, he's just trying to act hard. Okay, but, like, what if he really was hard and he just need to kind of, like, be redirect? But, you see, that's the thing, though. What Y'all going to say, but he went to a private school. You don't know him or what life he lives. Nobody is saying that, Terrence. We're talking about the persona. We're not even talking about you. It ain't even about you trying to be hard. It's about these. It's about the influence of the culture. And what the culture is now is I'm about to just rap about killing niggas or walking down on niggas. What does NBA Youngboy say in the uh, gritty song? Right foot creep, walking with that heat, right? I don't right. know, Terrence. This just feels like. 
I'm just saying, you not you 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 want to play the well, we don't know, we never know. I'm just saying because that, it's one side of hip hop that you're talking about that we're trying to sit here and say is responsible for the way that. Okay, yeah, you're right. There is bad music out there. It's just the way we talk about our music. We always got to be inspired by some shit. Or we always being pushed true. by some shit. You know? That's not true. And John I Morant's you. acting this way because and this is the music he listens to. Nah. <laughs> you keep bringing up Ja. Nobody's even talking about Nigga, ja you are, you're talking about something that came I'm up. From a, this about, is a, it is a John Morant kind of topic, but we talking about the influence alone. Yes. Bad music has an influence you're on our kids these days. You're making it seem like you're right. there's a small side of hip-hop that talks about violence, and everything else is what? Chance the Rapper, it ain't. I don't like them saying that. Matter of fact, when this nigga came out and said he loved his wife, it was whack. It was whack, though. I, don't know. I just don't like when people say hip hop is responsible for the way that people are acting just because the people that, a lot of the people that make hip hop come from certain environments and it kind of looks like that. Like, there is influence, but for John Morant or a nigga like that, the easiest thing for them to do is point at our shit and say, oh, it's, it's this. It's their the music. What if he really is just troubled? No, you're right. But you see, we are c fully capable as black men to listen to terrible music and not be influenced by it. It just makes us but look kind of like... we are also seeing... Don't it make us look kind of like whack? Like we, we easily influenced by the music that we listen to. Nah, we can true. listen to that shit and detach like most black men do. Yeah, but you also got to keep it on... And that's the thing. Like, I agree with you. I don't think the music is the reason for the lifestyle that people are even portraying in the music. It's all systemic and goes back to some form of oppression that led to this. All I'm saying is you I make, get it. Terrence, no. It is influencing you the youth. It seem I like get it. It people influences the, the people youth. People just a detached. Nah, people walking around with ski masks on at 12. It definitely influences the youth. This I thought we was talking about John ja Morant, though. If you're talking about the niggas that are walking around it's with a thousand man, John Morant, there's going to be people that are. There, it, it does it's influence millions of some John of the youth. It does. It's, I think it's millions. I just refuse to give hip hop credit for everything bad with our youth. Never said that. We're just talking about influence. You adding layers to it. And that's why I said in the beginning that it's not just that. But you know what? I want y'all to put y'all thoughts in the comments about what y'all think about that, especially if you're watching the visual podcast or. You know, this on mm -hmm. what y'all think about that, because it definitely is one of those things where I can see both sides of it. Same movie suggestion of the week. Damn, what the fuck was my movie suggestion of the week? Go ahead and go to real. My movie suggestion Literally of the right week here. is everything, everywhere, all at once. It is the Oscar winner. And <laughs> I can hear that. Oh, shit, everything, hear that. everywhere, <laughs> all at once is my is that Causeway? That's not Causeway, is it? Oh, that's catch. Oh, that's uh, I want to see Causeway too. I want to see that too. But uh, I'm my bad, y'all. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Right now, it's only on Paramount Plus and Showtime, and then Hulu has it. But they, you gotta have the joint where you, you know how you, it says it's on Hulu, but you gotta pay four dollars for it. It's, it's like that. So right now, you can watch it on Paramount Plus or Showtime. But it's the Oscar winner. It was, it was a movie suggestion before. If you haven't seen it because it was in limited theaters, you should watch it now. If the Oscars was the biggest reason that you should i mean if that didn't give you enough to why you should watch it you should yeah and my movie suggestion is probably going to be the the other movie that swept the oscars for the most part all quiet on the western front i've made it my movie suggestion before considering that it did so well at the oscars i feel like y'all should check it out my dad said he was going to check it out um i definitely think it's one of the best war movies that i've seen in a long ass time i love dunkirk I love stuff like Fury. I loved, uh, what's the other joint that was the war movie that came out? American Sniper. Uh, 1917. 1917, yes. So, and I saw 1917 in theaters. I saw Dunkirk. So I. I saw Dunkirk on, what did it come out? What did they shoot Dunkirk 70, on? Uh, no, uh, IMAX. 70, 70 millimeter it IMAX. Was, it was shot on something else too, though. We saw that at a, at a dope ass theater on a nice projector. So, like, what All was, I'm going to say is this is going to be one of the best movies that you've ever... This is going to be the best, one of the best-looking war movies that you've ever seen, if you've seen it. All Quiet on the Western Front. Movie suggestion of the week. I can't wait to watch it. I'm definitely getting ready to watch that joint. I feel like you showed me that movie. I was showing you some scenes from that joint. I was trying to tell him how dope it was. But I, I still need to watch that joint. I don't really have... I don't want to play the sports drop because I don't have a lot. Yeah. I did just want to just kind of mention some of the... Uh, 
some of the free agent trades. Man, that would be so NFL. dope if we had a, like a sports show where we could like really just kind of sit and talk about every everything sports. Sit and talk about sports shit because there's a lot going on. Breath, yeah. And don't worry, y'all. We're going to give uh, predictions for the NBA playoffs, all of that. I'm getting very savvy. Nah, Terrell, I, Terrell is getting better with his NBA shit. I'm really starting to know people that I'm like, y'all not even talking about these players. A lot of y'all casuals for real. Like, I'm a casual, but I'm, I'm, I'll be knowing. So we're going to do predict, predictions for that. But NFL um, just had the, uh, the, new, the new league date was on Wednesday, which is why you see all of the free agent frenzies going through. And so there was a bunch of different trades that came out. Some of the most notable ones, I'll just name a few. Um, Derek Carr went – the first one was Derek Carr going to the Saints. That mm-hmm. was, the, the ve- like, the very first one. Jimmy G went to the Raiders. Jesus. Um, I'm, I don't really have to name the whole list, but it's going to be – all I'm going to say is there's going to be a very new look in terms of the, uh, the NFL next year. Who knows what to – who knows what we're going to see, especially with Aaron Rodgers going to the New York Jets, who already have a, a great-ass defense and a receiver core. If they can get that deal done. If they can get that deal done as of, as of right now, it's not done. Nah, yeah, y'all. The NFL season is definitely – I mean, I feel like this it's, – it's, I feel like it's like this every year, but we're looking forward to somebody being on a different team. We just picked up Jacoby Brissett, my commanders. People, people are upset about it. Me, I just feel like whatever. We're good. We, mm-hmm. we just need to be trash for one year. So we can get that guy. There's really nobody out there to get. So Lamar, not, we not paying top dollar for Lamar. I would be scared for us to go get Lamar because we don't have the team that he needs to be on to be successful. If we if we give if we go get Lamar, we're not gonna be able to build a team around him. We y'all gonna, already ha- only all y'all need is an O line. Y'all have way more weapons than Lamar has ever had. You saying all we need is an O line, but like the reason why you see us picking up O linemen and like making certain moves, and we not getting Lamar is because Y'all <laughs> if we would have paid there. a Lamar, it would be just like last year. Last year we added all of that shit on our shit with with adding Wentz. Man, I feel like people are, and like I feel like people are underestimating what Lamar does for a team just by him being him. He's going to he's great, wins. but like we're not in a position where we can add him and then it's like. Oh, he's just going to take our team where it is now to the top. We've tried before. It's not worth the risk. And then we're guaranteeing this man money. We can't. I, I was glad that we didn't do it. And I actually wanted him. But when I think about it, I'm like, man, I'd hate to see us RG3 this man. I, I have. When you watch your, your, your team do another. Y'all are. Kinda, that's insane to say, to a sane comparison. This nigga RG3 sucked. He had one good year where he threw 3,200 yards. And that was his rookie of the year season. He was good as a rookie. Average ass season if you nowadays. But look, you also looking at a shit a shit franchise. What I would say, you know, sir. is I have Lamar in a tier alone with Patrick Mahomes, where even Joe Burrow isn't in the Lamar tier for me because Lamar and Burrow I mean, and uh, Pat Mahomes have both shown that I could literally have people that nobody believes in. Pat Mahomes just did it this year and won a Super Bowl, but going into the year they said, oh, he lost all his weapons. All he's got is Kelsey. And made Pacheco a star. You know what I'm saying? Like Juju. He didn't nobody on that team had a thousand yards outside of Kelsey. Everybody else was, you know, you never knew who you couldn't even pick these motherfuckers up in fantasy. Lamar is in that tier too, where I don't even need a team. I'm gonna get you ten wins alone by myself. I don't and think so, Lamar is worth the risk. I think Lamar has played well, but for my personal team. I don't think he's worth the risk because I don't think that we're one quarterback away. I don't think we're one guy away. I used to, but nah. We actually, after last year, seeing Wentz try to get out there with what we had, and he's supposed to be this, oh, he could go back to being, nah. Yeah. I think Lamar would come to our team and actually change the, the, the fuck out of it, but I'd just be scared that we're going to just, we're going to do a whole lot for nothing. I want that guy that's going to be there for the next 10 years. Yeah. Like, that's what I want. I want, like, they, I look You at, don't think you would have Lamar for 10 years? No. We already did the running quarterback thing. As a Washington fan, I'm just like, no. You know, as a Washington no, fan, I'm sorry. I nobody like Lamar ever. Huh? Y'all had one nigga, RG3, who was nothing like Lamar. Okay. Because Lamar still has a high passer rating. Like, this nigga, RG3 was a crash test dunk. To dunk. say RG3 is nothing like Lamar is a little ridiculous. But okay. You know what? Because you know what I'm saying yeah. when I say, as a Washington fan, we don't want Lamar. I mean, talent-wise. Talent All right, bet. Fuck it. It's not the same. 
it, it's definitely not the same because you're making it seem like I'm trying to say that RG3 and Lamar on the same level. I'm not. I'm just saying the running quarterback thing and then it's, it's, it's wild card. It's all of that. I think us, we're going to fuck it up. I would take Lamar in a heartbeat if it was me. I wish we could. And he's, whoever he ends up with, just watch. They're going to win 10 games. Nobody, if you didn't have Lamar, then you've never had someone like him. He honestly, he honestly outside of Vic, if you're a Falcons fan, you can say that. We did it before, but you'll do it again. Justin Fields, I could say, is like Lamar. Jolly. He's Lamar. He's, 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 he's like Lamar. Lamar, Lamar sure. could be. Mm-hmm. He, didn't, he ain't have an MVP season like Lamar, but yeah. He don't pass like Lamar, though. Bro's arm is not like Lamar. And niggas be sleep. But you know what? Um, but yeah. Anybody in the NFC East you worried about after that? Only uh I see the the Giants got Waller. That's a good look, Giants fans. Um, the that's a nice tight end. Um, but nah, I told Terrell, I don't get too hyped up around this time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's gonna look flashy, it's gonna look fly. Oh, this person's about to go here and do this. But I feel like we've seen certain trades happen, and then look, what was that? Remember around this time last year where, or maybe mm-hmm. it was a little bit more time, but remember thinking, oh, Devontae Adams is going to the Raiders. He's get, Oh, that, the Raiders are getting ready to be. We get all this time saying that. Then the Raiders, look, was Devontae Adams this crazy He had a great piece? season. He had a great season, but, I mean, like, they couldn't win games. Him and Carr couldn't win games. Y'all already know how I feel about the Raiders. And now they got... The Raiders got some pieces. I ain't going to lie. My Broncos picked up a few O-linemen, but it is what it is, man. We're going to keep our eye on it, continue looking at it. Um, the Nuggets are on a four-game losing streak, NBA. So I'm trying to figure out what's about to happen with, you know, with that. I'm liking what I'm seeing from the Kings. The Kings, the Cavs, the Lakers. I got a couple teams. I got about seven teams, six, seven, eight teams that I root for. But right now, I love what I see from the Kings and Cavs. The niggas was shitting on me because I said I like the Grizzlies. Nah, yeah. I'm, fu- I'm definitely fucking with what's going on with the uh, with the NBA. You know what I'm saying? I'm loving how it's getting close to the playoffs. Yeah, so we're going to see. But that's going to wrap it up for 143. Man, y'all make sure y'all stay safe out there. Enjoy the weekend. St. Patrick's Day is on Monday, actually, or Sunday. One of them days. Enjoy, drink responsibly.